are you using sequences but struggling to figure out how to see who's last enrolled in a sequence or what to enter into that field in the contact view? In this video, I'm gonna show you that trick and a few others. Welcome to HubSpot Hacks, where we help you get more out of HubSpot. Sequences are a pretty powerful tool in order to send one-to-one -one emails to a massive amount of people and have it come across as a personal email and not a mass marketing email. But knowing who's in what sequence can be a little tricky because there is a few workarounds and kind of things to watch out for in HubSpot. So I'm gonna take you through the reporting and then also how to see that in the contact view and we'll dive right in. So here I've got the contact view and there's a couple things I wanna to bring to your attention here. So we've got this more filters here. This more filters button has a lot of opportunity for us to sift and sort how we see the contacts on this screen. But if you wanna see who's in a sequence, it's not as simple as entering the name of the sequence. So I'm gonna jump over to sequences and show you that here real quick. So we've got, if I click on manage, we can see all the different sequences that are in our system. Now I know when I was a first time HubSpot user, I thought, I'm just gonna enter the name of the sequence in that field and we'll see who's in the sequence. Well, that doesn't quite work that way. So I'm gonna walk you through that here. If I say more filters and I look for the properties I can use to filter the sequence behavior, I'm going to use this last sequence enrolled. So if I say last sequence enrolled, again, upon first glance, I thought I'm just gonna enter the name of this sequence. Actually, if you click into this sequence, so I'm gonna use this one here as a blueprint service sequence. And you'll notice up at the top in this URL area, I've got the name of my, or the ID of my portal here. And then at the end, I've got this ID of the sequence. So this sequence ID is actually what you're going to copy and take over here to contacts and you're going to enter it into equal to. So again, you're looking for the sequence ID, not the name of the sequence. And if I click on apply filter, there we go. Now I've got a variety of contacts who were last enrolled in this sequence. Now. If they've been in another sequence since then, they will not show up in this filter. But again, I was looking for anybody who this is the last sequence that they had been through. So in terms of applicability here, a couple of things to keep in mind. Maybe you have a sequence that's called final outreach. Okay, if someone's been through the final outreach sequence and they have completed it and that was the last sequence that they were in, you wanna see a list of those contacts. Maybe you need to clean the CRM and get some of them out of there. Maybe they need to be re-enrolled in marketing contacts. That's something you can also do with, with a workflow. We do have a video about workflows versus sequences if you're interested in that. But at first glance, again, this is how you're going to look at those sequences in the contact view. Now I'm gonna jump back to sequences and just um, touch on a few other things that often trip people up in this area. So when I first click into sequences, I'm gonna to get to this overview tab and it's going to give me the top enrollments and a little bit of high level reporting. Now let's say that I'm in a position where I'm not actually doing sequences and instead I'm looking at the activity of my team who's doing sequences. If I click into manage, what's gonna happen is I'm going to see all of the sequences that are currently there. But if I'm in the overview screen, I probably won't see anything if nobody has been enrolled by me. So to get rid of that, you can actually just click on the X here and then you can see all of the enrollments across the company. If you wanna set your enrollment date by let's say 30 days or the last year, you can go ahead and drill down in that way as well. If you wanted to see status from anyone who's enrolled but they haven't started their sequence, if you wanna see who's been paused, again, all of that's available here in the sequencing view. And as HubSpot continues to expand, I'm sure there's gonna be more opportunities here. We can look actually at specific companies and then we can also look at reporting on just specific sequences. So that's a little bit of insight into the sequences area. And again, back to the contacts area. If I clear this all, a couple more filters to think about when you're looking at sequencing um, and some behavior here. Oops, we're gonna go sequence. I can also use last sequence ended date. So let's say you had a sequence that went out to 500 contacts and their last ended date was seven days ago, I could actually look for last sequence ended date was, let's say before whatever seven days ago was today. Now, some again, some use of this might be, you might wanna follow up with those people. You may want to invite them to a webinar. You may wanna to talk to your marketing team if you don't have a workflow in place for you to actually use that. So keep in mind, there's a lot of ways to use this information, but the reason I'm sharing this here is, again, the default properties often trip up some folks in that sequencing view area, as well as in the contact screen when you're trying to see who is enrolled in what sequence and you need that sequence ID. So hopefully that's helpful for you today in yourself and your sales team, as well as if you're marketing, helping out the sales with their sequences. For more tips, tricks, and how-tos, hit that subscribe button and we will see you next week.